First thing first, Aiden, how are you? I'm quite good, thank you. <laughs> okay, that's very good to hear. So, before we talk about the record, I'd like to go back a little bit. Do you remember the first album you ever bought? Uh, yes, I do. Um, I'm not so old, but one interesting thing about me is I'm just old enough to have still bought my first album on cassette tape when it was still not the most popular thing but it was just at that time when it was like cassette to CD so I had the option of buying it on CD but I opted for cassette because that's what I had at home mm -hmm. and the, I bought two albums at the store that day so I think technically the first album that I bought was uh, Green Day Dookie okay. <laughs> but I also bought uh, the Smashing Pumpkins Melancholy and, the, melancholy and the Infinite Sadness that day. I, or, yeah, maybe I bought three albums <laughs> that day. I think also, although, yeah, I think maybe I also got, like, Eric Clapton Unplugged or <laughs> something, oh, okay. something like that. I don't know. Like, those are, you know, 90s, 90s albums. Sure. And out of, out of those three, then, which one had the biggest impact on you? I listened to the Green Day album the most, and I still know, like, all the songs off of it. I think, uh, yeah, I just think probably from from almost most perspectives, I would say that probably Green Day, if you can believe that. If it, you know, your style has changed a bit <laughs> since then, but do you remember, or maybe you still like it, but, but what made them appeal to you? Um, they were just sort of like fun, there was a fun, mm -hmm. And there was also on that album there was the secret track that happened at the at the at the end mm -hmm. that I think was a song about masturbation, but you know, like they, they went for it. I just think that album's great. I don't I don't actually know that much like I'm not someone who knows a lot of trivia about most albums sure. and I don't know that much about that one. So I don't actually like I'm not an expert I'm not an expert on it, but I do I just, I still really like it. I could, I could put it on now, and I think I would still find something en enjoyable okay. in it. Uh, what age was this? Uh, Roughly. <laughs> what is that? That's like 90, again, like I don't, I don't really know, 92 or 93. So I, I was probably uh, eight, eight okay. years old or something like that. So this is very young, but... At this time, were you already thinking about making music yourself? Um, I played music when I was that age, but I most I played piano, um, and I hated it. Okay. I, I hated playing. Why? Piano. Uh, just ba just bad at practicing. Okay. But I liked making up my own songs. I just didn't like playing other people's songs. So I sang. I sang in a choir, and I played piano, um, but. It's funny, I had, so both, both of those albums, the Smashing Pumpkins and Green Day, they're like guitar rock albums. Sure. And my dad played guitar, and my mom played guitar, actually. Every, every, like all of the things pointed me towards playing guitar, but I didn't, I didn't play guitar until I was 17, six, six, 16 or so. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> so, so a form of rebellion, maybe, against what, what the rest of the family was doing? Yeah, I mean, you, you, you tell me. <laughs> I, think, I, I think maybe I didn't really know what I wanted um, to do. I, I, I'm not sure what it is exactly that I wanted to do at eight. I don't think most eight-year-olds know, <laughs> sure. what they, you know what they musically want to do. But um, there was... I had a lot of really good music teachers, and I think they kept me interested in doing music, and I kept doing it and kept doing it. Um, and then eventually, I was in high school, and I went to a specific high school back in Canada, where I'm from, I'm from this, this, this island, and this one school on the island is known for having a really good jazz program. And so I went to this school thinking, I'm gonna go and I'm gonna play jazz, and at that at that point, I was playing a horn, playing a, a trumpet, mm -hmm. and then I got bored, <laughs> and I was always kind of, I, I'm someone who, I don't love conflict mm -hmm. with people, but I do love 
sort of pushing the envelope <laughs> of things. So I had these really great teachers, and I had this really great jazz teacher, and he was always telling me, like, I can tell that you are not practicing. Mm-hmm. I can tell. I can tell it. You'd be so much better in your playing if you practice. And my response to him is I showed up at a, uh, at a rehearsal mm-hmm. with drumsticks, and I just started playing drums. <laughs> So instead of practicing, I just yeah. started another instrument that I had never taken a lesson on, and I just came and expected that I could just play, and I couldn't do it. <laughs> I couldn't do it. I didn't have the coordination, mm-hmm. and I'd never played drums before. So, um, But then I found a friend in, uh, in this band, in this, in this jazz mm-hmm. like, orchestra, and he said, I'll teach, you how to, I'll teach you how to play drums, how to hold the sticks, and how to, how to do this stuff. And so we just worked on it, and... Um, and I worked on it myself, uh, and then eventually I realized that playing in a jazz band was, I don't want to offend people here, jazz can be really cool, but at that time I think I was thinking back to like Green Day and The Clash and all of these like rock bands that I really liked, and they weren't playing like jazz drums or horn or piano or singing in choir, all the things that I had done. And, um, and I thought, I got to get a guitar. <laughs> but look, looking back, in, in hindsight, and then what you've made over the past years, did it help having that background in, in, in that jazz ensemble and, and choirs and, and that kind of stuff? Uh, certainly. I mean, I, when I was younger, uh, I was like I was singing in a school choir and in a church choir as well. So I was singing in both, mm-hmm. and I got a lot of different music, choral music, um, and you know I was also being in the church choir. I was able to listen to organists mm-hmm. play. Uh, sometimes you'd you'd be singing with like this really huge church organ, which is like this incredibly loud, sure. powerful instrument. It's kind of like the electric guitar of classical music or like something, you know what I mean? And, um, and hearing Bach mm-hmm. profoundly changed the way that I think about how melody and chords are put together. And I didn't know that until I started writing my own music on guitar. Because I find that I don't, uh, I don't play guitar in the same style that like Billy Joe from Green Day or even I don't know. I think I think uh, about guitar and about music and how it makes you emotionally feel and trying to convey trying to convey emotion mostly with the the chords and and melodies, which is something that I think about when I listen to to Bach so that's it it comes from a different place than Green Day but actually maybe they all uh, come together so with this in mind the the background and and what you mentioned just Mm -hmm. about uh, songwriting how long did it take you to write a song that you were proud of Uh, still working on it (laughs) it's funny it's I listen to a lot of uh, whatever the newest thing that I'm working on Mm I think this is very true for many people. I don't know, maybe like the Beatles weren't like this. Maybe they thought everything they ever made was, sure. was great. I, Paul McCartney would think that. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, no, I think, uh, yeah, it's also, it's, that's uh, part of my personality. Um, it's like a, it's a Canadian thing to not, to not be like... Very prideful. Very, yeah, prideful of... Or your stuff, or I'm making excuses. The thing I work on a new thing, and that's the thing that's exciting to me. Mm-hmm. And then I grow up, and I have more experiences, and I travel, and I go places, and I change the way that I think about the world in some ways. And then I can go back and listen to something that I've made, and it not all the time, but it can be. It can be embarrassing. Okay. It can be humbling. It can be many different, it can be many different things. And so it's not that I'm not proud of old songs. 
It's that they are pieces of the past. Mm -hmm. And I'm someone who's interested in the past. I'm interested in history. I'm interested in all these things. But what I'm really interested in is making new things. But, but yeah, because what, what you say of, of having that personality, but there has to be at, at, at a certain point a level of confidence in what you're doing. So that, that's in the here and now kind of in. in. Yeah, I I feel uh, confident ten percent of the time, and that's I also probably spend ten percent of my time creating things. I think that when I am um, when I make things. Mm -hmm that's when I feel the most disconnected from the world. And when you feel disconnected from the world, you feel less um, judged. Mm. And there's something about when you, something about when you, you make something and then you release it and then it's allowed to be commented and critiqued by everyone, mm. that it actually makes you critique it more and I find the my th I find that that's that's one of the <laughs> just that's one of the things that I didn't know about before I, I started making music and releasing it before I was just making music for myself and um, there's a part of that that I really do miss because now there's always in the back of your mind that you have an audience and people will yeah. hear it yeah certainly um, I think that the, the best creators, the people that I really look up to, I just have this part of their personality that allows them to block that out. Mm -hmm. So I'm learning, that's the thing that I'm learning right now, you know, before it was learning how to hold the sticks and play the, do the thing, play the drums, learn how to play guitar, how to sing. And now <laughs> I'm learning about other things that are actually more like emotional. <laughs> but, but then... You, you you obviously you play with a band and there's people around you. So yeah. so is this creative process? Is that a, a an insular thing for you? Yes, yeah. Uh, I I do love playing with people, mm -hmm. but the thing that, that provides me the most satisfaction mm -hmm. is to sit down and to figure out what the. What the th what the idea is? I watched a great video, or I listened. I don't know if it was a video or if I listened to it, but there was a great David Lynch thing about, and he's just talking about ideas and what it is to be creative and to have ideas. Mm -hmm. But you don't have ideas. There are there are ideas that are in the world, and we are fishing for ideas, mm -hmm. and we have memory to pull from and. Um, and history, and that's all of the stuff about sort of stealing and co-opting other people's sure. stuff, but turning it into something that is personal and mm -hmm. and and just emotionally fulfilling for yourself. And that process is the most important thing. Um, and I forget that all <laughs> all the time, and I'm only reminded when other people say it or when I'm actually doing it and, and, and trying to and trying to find these ideas.